welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, a very cold Claire Ridgway. Uh, yes, it is rather chilly. It's not always hot and sunny in Spain, you know. Okay, where am I taking you back to today? Well, funnily enough, I'm actually taking you to the Stuart period, and I'll explain why. On this day in Tudor history, the 27th of January 1606, in the reign of King James I, the eight surviving conspirators of the November 1605 gunpowder plot were tried at Westminster for high treason. Why am I talking about something that happened during the reign of King James I in the Stuart period when this whole series is called On This Day in Tudor History? Well, that's because the gunpowder plot actually had its origins in Queen Elizabeth I's reign. As I've explained in the previous talks on the topic, Elizabeth had continued, sorry, that's just a cat knocking the, uh, the camera. Elizabeth I had continued the work of King Henry VIII, her father, and Edward VI, her half-brother, and had made England a Protestant country with her religious settlement. By the end of her reign, England was a very dangerous place for Catholics, with the threat of persecution and even death hanging over them. As Queen Elizabeth I's health deteriorated, the Catholics pinned their hopes on King James VI of Scotland, who was, of course, the son of Queen uh, Mary of Scotland, Mary Queen of Scots, who was married to a Catholic as well. Although he himself was Protestant, the Catholics felt sure that James would be sympathetic to their cause. They were unfortunately going to be very disappointed. I'll give you a link to my video on the gunpowder plot, which explains it in more detail. But spoilers, it was a plot to blow up the House of Lords at the opening of Parliament on the 5th of November and to assassinate King James I. And it was uncovered on the 5th of November, 1605, when Guy Fawkes was caught with 36 barrels of gunpowder in the cellars beneath Westminster. But back to on this day in history, the 27th of January, 1606, and the trials of Guy Fawkes, Robert and Thomas Winter, John Grant, Ambrose Rockwood, Robert Keyes, Thomas Bates, and Sir Everard Digby and also Jesuits Henry Garnet, Oswald Tesmond, and John Gerard were said to have traitorously moved and persuaded the conspirators. The other conspirators had died shortly after the plot had been discovered. John Wright, Christopher Wright, Thomas Percy, and Robert Catesby were all shot dead at Holbeach House in a siege on the 8th of November, and Francis Tresham died in the Tower of London on the 23rd of December, 1605. Those tried on this day in 1606 were tried by a commission which included the Earls of Salisbury, Nottingham, Suffolk, Worcester, Devonshire and Northampton, with Sir John Popham acting as Lord Chief Justice. The men all pleaded not guilty to the charges laid against them, which included a plot to first to deprive the king of his crown, secondly to murder the king, the queen and the prince, thirdly to stir rebellion and sedition in the kingdom, and fourthly to bring a miserable destruction amongst the subjects, fifthly to change, alter and subvert the religion here established, sixthly to ruinate, oh, I do love that, ruinate this state these accusations would be put into effect in the following manner. First, the king, the queen, the prince, the lords spiritual and temporal, the knights and burgesses of the parliament should be blown up with powder. Secondly, that the whole royal issue mail should be destroyed. Thirdly, that they would take into their custody Elizabeth and Mary, the king's daughters, and proclaim the Lady Elizabeth Queen. Fourthly, that they should feign a proclamation in the name of Elizabeth in which no mention should be made of alteration of religion, nor that they were parties to the treason until they'd raised power to perform the same and then to proclaim all grievances in the kingdom should be reformed. 
the men were all found guilty of treason and sentenced to the reward due to traitors, I love that reward, whose hearts be heartened, i.e. to be hanged, drawn and quartered. Everard Digby, Robert Winter, John Grant and Thomas Bates were executed on the 30th of January 1606 at St Paul's Churchyard. On the 31st of January 1606, Thomas Winter, Ambrose Rockwood, Robert Keyes and Guy Fawkes were executed in the same manner at Westminster in the Old Palace Yard. Henry Garnet was executed on the 3rd of May 1606. But John Gerard managed to flee from England with the financial support of Elizabeth Fox and died a natural death. Wow, a natural death in the Tudor period? Well, in the Stuart period in this case. Died a natural death in 1637 at the English College in Rome. Oswald Tesmond also escaped. He fled to Calais pretending to be an owner of a cargo load of dead pigs. He died in Naples in 1636. So most of the plotters of the gunpowder plot came to rather sticky ends. Now, have you seen Kit Harrington's gunpowder miniseries? Although it wasn't completely accurate, it was rather fictional at times, I thought it was good to see Robert Catesby getting some attention because these days in the UK, uh, remember, remember the 5th of November, it's all about Guy Fawkes. No mention of Robert Catesby, one of the other conspirators who really was the brains behind it. Um, so Robert Catesby got the attention in that mini miniseries. And I thought it did bring home to viewers just how Catholics suffered at the time and the, the reason behind the plot. So if you do get a chance to see it, it is rather gory at times. Um, if you do get a chance to see it, then I would highly recommend it if you can take it with a little bit of a pinch of salt. Also on this day in history, the 27th of January, 1596, Sir Francis Drake died of dysentery in Portobello Harbour, Panama, and I'll give you a link to my video from last year on that. I'll also give you a link to my video on the gunpowder plot to learn more about the origins of the plot. So that's what happened on this day in history, not quite Tudor history, but something that had its origins in the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. You can subscribe by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live. And you can, of course, give me a like and leave a comment. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.